Good evening aspirants welcome to the Hindu news analysis by Shankar AS Academy for the date 27th of July 2022 displayed here are the list of news articles we will be going through today now let's start our discussion look at this news article we all know where rameshwaram is right rameshwaram is a island off the coast of tamil nadu it is connected to the tamil nadu mainland by the famous pamban bridge and gulf of mannar marine national park is located near rameshwaram See this Gulf of Mannar Marine National Park is known for its unique marine ecosystem okay but right now this marine national park has grabbed an attention this is because this national park recently witnessed Asia's first sighting of light mantled albatross okay this is a very rare event this is the backdrop in which the news article is written So in this context we will see about albatross for our plumes perspective see we know albatross is a seabird this seabird belongs to the family diomediidae okay this is a huge seabird you can see the image here this is one of the largest birds in the world okay the wingspan can grow up to 11 feet and albatross has the longest wingspan of any bird in the world So why do they have such a long wingspan this is because using their long wings they can stay in air for a long time without flapping their wings okay so sometimes even without flapping their wings they can stay in air for over hours and hours okay using this ability they can cover a vast distance so this is something unique to this birds they developed this ability because they spend most of their time flying over the ocean see in some cases it has been noted that albatross have flown over the ocean for over an year before setting their foot on land okay so this is why they have developed such huge wing span and their ability to fly for long distance without flapping their wings and another important feature about this bird is that like all sea birds albatross can also drink sea water okay note this point see presently scientists have identified more than 22 different species of albatross and the albatross in use that is the light mantled albatross is one among the 22 species when we talk about the albatross lifespan it is one of the long limbed bird in the world okay there are some evidence that some albatross have lived over 50 years okay so these are some basic points about albatross now let us see about its habitat look at the dark blue portion here these are the habitat of albatross see we already saw there are 22 species of albatross right one of the common thing about the 22 species is that all the 22 species share this same habitat if you look at this map you can see that the albatross are mainly found in southern pacific ocean southern atlantic ocean southern indian ocean in the southern hemisphere in addition to this they are also found in the northern pacific ocean here what you have to note is that albatross are not found in the northern atlantic ocean okay they are mainly found in this narrow bands that is highlighted here here you have to note that albatross are pelagic birds that is they spend most of their lives on or above ocean they only come to the land to mate and breed okay an additional thing you have to note is that they are mainly found near areas of upwelling see day before yesterday we were talking about bioluminescence dilip sir might have mentioned about upwelling upwelling happens in areas where there is offshore winds when offshore wind happens water moves away from land and water from the depths of ocean come to the surface to fill the vacuum created so this is upwelling when upwelling happens lot of nutrients from the bottom of the ocean comes to the surface so generally places where upwelling happens are very nutrition rich and they support a huge number of marine life since albatross feed on fish they are found mainly in areas where upwelling happens okay this is about the habitat and the distribution of albatross now let us go to the breeding pattern see i already mentioned that albatross is a pelagic bird that is they spend most of their life flying over the ocean and they set foot on land only to breed okay here breeding happens in colonies 
that is during the mating season large number of albatross visit a island and start the mating and breeding process these colonies are mainly found in remote oceanic islands now let us come to the growth of the albatross i already mentioned albatross live for a long period of time that is their average life span is 50 years the young albatross grow at a very slow rate okay sometimes it has been observed that albatross may take even 10 months to start the flight okay after learning to fly they will fly for about 5 to 10 years before coming back to the island to start mating and start the breeding process okay so these are the basic things you have to know about albatross here we saw about its distribution its habitat its breeding and some important facts now let us come back to the news article see i mentioned that the sighting of the light mantled albatross in gulf of mannar marine national park is a rare sight and it is the first sight of albatross in asia and this is not a very welcome sign because scientists believe that changes in wind pattern due to global warming might have brought the albatross to such unfamiliar places so even though this is a first sighting of albatross in india and even asia this is not a welcome sign so that's all regarding this news article with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article look at this text and context article this article mainly deals with the sorry state of affairs of the state owned discoms that is electricity distribution companies in india the article has three sections first it deals with why the state distribution companies are loss making then it goes on to say why even though the state distribution companies are loss making they are not ready to raise their prices and finally it deals with the issue of free electricity to agriculture sector so this is about the general structure of the article so we will see all the points mentioned in the article in a little bit detailed manner before getting into the discussion we must first know about the uday scheme uday scheme is nothing but ujwal discom assurance yojana see this is nothing but a debt restructuring plan for state owned discoms see we all know state owned discoms are loss making what this scheme proposes to do is that the losses made by the state owned discoms are absorbed by the state governments itself that is if the state discom is making 100 rupees loss 75 rupee loss will be absorbed by the state government and it will be provided as a budgetary support and the remaining 25 rupees loss will be issued as a low interest bond by the discom itself so this is how uday plans to restructure the state owned discoms in addition to this this scheme aims to make the state owned discoms function efficiently see it is proposing to make the state owned discom function efficiently by reducing the gap or the difference between average unit cost of supply that is acs and the average revenue realized here acs that is average unit cost of supply is nothing but the cost incurred by the discom in procuring electricity from the power generators that is basically ac is the rate at which the power discoms purchase electricity from the power generator okay and arr that is average revenue realized is the cost received by the discom after it sells the power to the final consumers so uday scheme aims to reduce the difference between acs and arr and it finally planned to reduce the difference between acs and arr to zero by the year 2018 to 19 okay this is about the basic features of the uday scheme now let us see the article first this article mainly focuses on the tan get go that is tamil nadu generation and distribution corporation tan get go is the state owned discom of tamil nadu see recently tan get go proposed to raise the rate of electricity by 10% to 35% this is because tan get go has been accumulating losses year on year okay why is tan get go accumulating losses this is because for tan get go the difference between acr and arr is pretty high so basically if tan get go purchases power from a power generator for 5 rupee per unit this is just an example you guys if tan get go purchases power from a power generator at 5 rupees per unit and it sells the power to domestic consumer at 3 rupee per unit it is making a loss of 2 rupees per every unit 
So, the difference between ARR and ACS is adding as a loss to TAN Gitco. What TAN Gitco does is, to adjust the losses, it started borrowing money as loans. And this loan has also started accumulating. We have to pay interest for the loans, right? So, this interest burden has started to increase. So, this is the sorry state of affair of TAN Gitco. Accumulated cumulative financial loss of only TAN Gitco alone is 1,13,000 crore in the year 2020-21. Okay. So, this is why TAN Gitco proposed to increase the electricity rate. Okay. See, we already saw about the Uday scheme, right? Uday scheme was launched in 2015 and Tamil Nadu joined the scheme only in 2017. And we already saw by 2018-19, the difference between ACS and ARR should be reduced to zero. But in case of Tamil Nadu, while the difference between ACS and ARR was 0 0.6 rupees, that is 60 pais in the year 2015-16, it increased to 1 rupee 75 pais in the year 2019-18. Okay? So, instead of reducing the difference between ACS and ARR, Tamil Nadu or TAN Getco has managed to increase the difference between ACS and ARR. So, not only they are not reducing the losses, they are actually increasing the losses. See, till now we saw about the condition of Tamil Nadu Generation and Distribution Corporation. This condition is not just unique to Tamil Nadu. Almost all state-owned power discounts in India are facing such losses. See, consider this. In Tamil Nadu, there is only one power distribution company, that is Tan Gedco. So, virtually, Tan Gedco holds a monopoly over power supply in Tamil Nadu. Normally, what happens is, when there is monopoly, an organization can easily raise the prices and make lots of profit. Okay? Consider this example. There is only one shop in your area. There are so many consumers and you have to purchase food from only that shop. What the shop owner will do? He will increase the rate and gain lots of profit. So basically, monopoly means lots of profit. But only in case of state power distribution companies, even though they are monopoly, they are making losses. This is mainly because they are not raising the prices. Now let us see why they are not raising the prices. See, price of power is highly politicized in our country. Okay? So, every year before elections, the political parties will announce power subsidies and free power just to gain traction in the election process, even though this process is unsustainable. Here, take Andhra Pradesh for example. Andhra Pradesh recently revised the rate of power for domestic consumers. This is the revision that happened after 20 long years. In case of Punjab, for domestic consumer, power revision has not taken place at all. And after this election, after coming to power this year, the new Punjab government has announced 300 units of free power. Okay. In case of Gujarat, in the forthcoming election, Ahmadmi party has promised to provide free power for all domestic power consumers. See, here you can easily see that there is a relation between the price of power and the political process. So, basically, the political parties, just to gain traction in the election process, they are providing unsustainable subsidies which will hurt the power sector of the state in the long run. So, this is an unsustainable process, right? So, the central government and the RBI has taken some measures to address this issue. In case of the central government, we already saw the Uday scheme. The central government mainly launched the Uday scheme just to make the last making state-owned power discount function better. In addition to this, the central government also launched the scheme called Liquidity Infusion Scheme. Through this scheme, 135,000 crores of loans would be offered by the central government directly to the state-owned power discounts. Of the 1,35,000 crore, 1,3,000 crore loan has already been distributed. So, these are the two steps taken by the central government. In case of RBI, what RBI said is, it has issued a directive to the commercial banks that the banks should not lend loan to the state-owned power break scams when they have not revised the rate every year. So, basically what RBI said is, this commercial bank can only issue to the power discounts only when they have revised the rate of power every year. 
so these are the steps taken by central government and the rbi to address the inefficiencies in state owned power discoms finally let us come to agriculture see already the price of power is highly politicized in india okay when we take agriculture this sector is always politicized so in most states free power is provided to agriculture the tamil nadu government started providing free power to agriculture in the 1980s itself until now no free power that is provided to agriculture sector is metered see only if it is metered we can identify whether the subsidy provided to the agriculture sector is reaching the actual beneficiaries or not when the power is unmetered there could be leakages in subsidy so two states are given here as an example which addressed this issue first is gujarat what gujarat did is instead of providing metered connection to the agriculturist they have created a separate feeder that provides only to the farmers so through this the entire power that is given in a subsidized price to the farmers is noted so through this mechanism they can calculate the amount of free power provided to the agriculture sector the next state that has addressed this issue is madhya pradesh in case of madhya pradesh the madhya pradesh electricity regulatory commission has issued a statement claiming that it will provide 5% of energy charges as incentives when the farmers start using energy saving devices such as efficient pump sets and uh, led lights okay so by making demand side adjustment and making the power consumption efficient the amount of power provided to the agriculture sector is managed here okay so that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion first we saw about udai scheme then we saw a specific example that is than get co here we saw why it is loss making and after that we saw why even though it is a monopoly it is not raising power for the domestic consumers in that we saw how power for the domestic consumers is highly politicized in our country after that we saw two steps taken by the central government and the step taken by rbi to make the functioning of power discoms in india efficient finally we saw the issue of providing free power to farmers and agriculturists in india so that's all regarding this discussion with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article look at this news article see this news article is related to the stuff we discussed in the previous discussion that is issues with the state owned power discoms okay here the news article says that the power engineers and employees are opposing the electricity amendment bill 2022 their contention is that the power engineers and employees were not consulted while framing the amendment bill see this electricity amendment bill 2022 makes amendment to the electricity act 2003 see this electricity act 2003 generally deals with generation distribution transmission and trading of power in india okay so this is about the news article now we will see about the electricity amendment bill 2022 what are its advantages and why it is opposed by few people okay see one of the important feature of the electricity amendment bill 2022 is it aims to bring in private sector participation in the electricity distribution companies see in the last article we saw that only state owned discoms exist in most states and they are loss making also okay this bill proposes to introduce private players when private players also comes into play the consumers will have option to choose either from the state owned discoms or privately owned discoms this is the basic of the electricity amendment bill 2022 in addition to this the bill also proposes to establish a body called electricity contract enforcement authority this electricity contract enforcement authority mainly deals with contract related disputes in the electricity sector see in the electricity sector the discoms do not purchase power directly from the generators they sign a contract with the power generators and they stick to the contracts so this body that is electricity contract enforcement authority deals with issues when the power discoms or the power generators fail to abide by the contract they have signed this is the important function of this body the next function is it enforces the renewable energy quota see right now the power discoms have renewable energy obligations 
that is of the total power they purchase from the market a certain portion of it must be strictly from the renewable power producers this body that is the electricity contract enforcement body make sure that the power discounts abide by the renewable energy obligations so these are the two functions of the electricity contract enforcement authority in addition to this this bill aims to introduce a separate selection commission okay this selection commission will select the chairman and members of the following bodies the bodies are state regulatory commission central regulatory commission appellate tribunal and the body that we saw just now that is electricity contract enforcement authority for all these four bodies the selection of chairman and the members will be done by this separate selection committee so these are the important features of the electricity amendment bill 2020 Now let us see the advantages of the bill. See in our last discussion we saw that state owned power discounts are loss making even though they are monopoly in the states. In that we saw that the major issue is they are not able to raise the price because electricity price in our country is highly politicized. So this is where this bill comes in. By introducing private sectors in the power distribution sector competition will be ensured. Okay? by increased competition efficiency will also be ensured you must have heard about the term price discovery right see right now we are living in a capitalist economy in a capitalist economy the price is not dependent on the cost of production instead price is dependent on the demand and supply you must have seen this graph right in the x axis there is quantity and in the y axis there is price when the price is high the demand is low when the price is low the demand is high this is the demand curve in case of supply curve when the price is high the supply is high when the price is low the supply is low in this part both the demand and supply curve will meet this is the equilibrium spot this is how price discovery will normally occur in a capitalist environment but in case of power discounts this is not happening due to political intervention when private players are introduced in the sector competition will develop and price discovery that naturally occurs in a market based ecosystem will start to occur so this is the main advantage of the electricity amendment bill 2022 so this will on one hand increase efficiency in the sector on the other hand it will reduce the loss of the government owned power discounts due to better price discovery consumers will also get power at a cheaper cost and 100% power supply will also be ensured okay these are the advantages and in the news article it stated that certain section of citizens are opposing the bill now let us see why the bill is opposed the first major contention is that by allowing private players the power sector will turn into a business okay see some people are commenting that when private players start come into the power distribution sector they will only supply power to the high paying consumers that is industrial players and the commercial sector they won't supply power to the domestic consumers and agriculture sector this is the major issue that is cited by the people against this bill the second issue with the bill is the aspect of federalism see currently electricity is placed under the concurrent list under schedule 7 of the constitution so in case of concurrent subjects both center and the state have equal say but after this bill that is the electricity amendment bill 2022 the power will shift towards the center so state will lose its freedom so since this bill opposes the federal structure which is the basic structure of our constitution some section of people are opposing the bill the final thing is the penalty that is given to the power discounts that is not meeting the renewable energy obligation see earlier reserve i told that every power discount has to buy certain proportion of the power directly from the renewable power producers when the power discounts fail to meet this obligation they are issued with the penalty and the penalty that is provided under the electricity amendment bill 2022 is very high this is the issue cited by the power discounts so these are all the three issues first is it affects federalism second entry of private players will only benefit the commercial and industrial sector and finally the penalty provided for not meeting the renewable energy obligation is very high so that's all regarding this discussion In this discussion we saw some major features of the electricity amendment bill 2022 then we saw the advantages associated with the bill and finally we saw the issues cited in the bill 
with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article look at this news article the news article states that india has added five more sites as ramsar sites or wetlands of international importance so after adding the five sites the total number of ramsar sites in india has risen to 54 so this is about the news article so in this discussion we will focus on ramsar convention the criteria to award a site the ramsar tag and we will also see about the newly added sites now let's begin with ramsar convention see ramsar convention is a intergovernmental treaty and it provides a framework for international cooperation for the conservation of wetland habitats see we all know wetlands are important right wetlands are very important for ecological processes and wetlands are a home for a number of flora and fauna so this is why ramsar convention is important because through ramsar convention wetlands are conserved okay see the signing of the ramsar convention took place in 1971 in a small iranian town called ramsar see this convention was originally titled as convention on wetlands but since the signing of the convention took place in a place called ramsar it is generally referred to as ramsar convention now let us see the aims of the convention or what the convention aims to achieve the first important aim is it tries to halt the worldwide loss of wetlands the second thing is it tries to conserve the wetlands through wise use and management of the remaining wetlands okay these are the two aims of the ramsar convention now let us see how the ramsar convention plans to achieve this aims it plans to achieve the aims through international cooperation policy making capacity building and transfer of technology see here take international cooperation why for the conservation of wetlands international cooperation is required here take the aral sea for example see aral sea is located between kazakhstan and uzbekistan and you must have seen the images of aral sea disappearing in the coming days so to conserve the wetland international cooperation not just from kazakhstan and uzbekistan but also the cooperation of the all the neighboring countries including russia georgia everything is required to conserve the sea so this is why for conserving the wetlands international cooperation is required okay now coming back in addition to international cooperation policy making and capacity building to achieve the goals the ramsar convention imposes responsibility on the contracting bodies to conserve the wetlands throughout their territories in addition to this if a particular wetland is designated as a ramsar site or it is added to the list of wetlands of international importance additional obligations are imposed on the contracting bodies see here what they mean is that see india is a signatory of the ramsar convention so just by signing the convention india has the responsibility to protect all the wetlands within its territory by specifically designating 54 wetlands as ramsar site additional responsibility are put upon india to conserve these 54 sites specifically so this is what they mean here okay now coming back three important organizations play a important role in ramsar convention they are unesco international union for conservation of nature that is iucn and the international waterfowl and wetland research bureau that is iwrb here unesco acts as a depository for the convention and the iucn that is international union for conservation of nature and natural resources and the international waterfowl and wetland research bureau both act as a administrative body of secretariat of the convention okay so this is the general organizational structure of the ramsar convention in addition to this i have displayed here the criteria that is used to designate a wetland as ramsar site you can go through it now finally the news article said five wetlands from india are added to the ramsar site the wetlands are karikili bird sanctuary pallikarnai marsh reserve forest and pichavaram mangroves in tamil nadu shakya sagar in madhya pradesh and pala wetlands in mizoram okay after going through the discussion what you have to do is take your atlas and try to locate these wetlands okay you can expect a map based question in the prelims examination see in tamil nadu itself three wetlands are designated as ramsar site very recently so in a map based question in your prelims examination they might give these three wetlands and they might ask you to arrange these 
wetlands from north to south or south to north so likewise only question will be framed so take up your atlas and try to locate the wetlands that have been recently conferred ramsar tag okay so with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the last news article for our discussion this is the last discussion for today but before getting into the news article let me give a introduction about aids see we all know the basic points about aids i am just revising the points aids or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome is caused by a virus the virus is human immunodeficiency virus that is hiv when hiv infects a person it attacks the t cells in our body t cells are a type of white blood cells okay when the virus that is hiv when it infects the t cells the immune system in our body is compromised when immune system in our body is compromised our body gets opportunistic disease like tb so this is why there is a famous statement that is it is not aids that kills a person but the opportunistic infection does so basically when we get infected by hiv it is not the hiv that kills us since hiv affects our immune system other opportunistic diseases like tb or cancer will kill us okay so how is it prevented see there is no vaccine for the virus and uh, only way a person affected by aids treated is through anti retroviral drugs or anti retroviral treatment see in the anti retroviral treatment a concoction of drugs is given to prevent the hiv from reproducing in our body that is the virus will not be completely eliminated but the rate of reproduction of the virus is managed by a mixture of drugs see 85% of people affected with hiv are treated with the following drugs the drugs are tenofovir lamivudine and dulatigravir okay so a combination of these three drugs 300 mg of tenofovir 300 mg of lamivudine and 50 mg of dulatigravir are given as anti retroviral drug to the person with hiv to prevent the reproduction of virus so this is the basic about hiv and aids okay Now let's get to the news article. The article says that some patients have been complaining about the lack of availability of these antiretroviral drugs. But the officials have ensured that there is enough stock of these antiretroviral drugs and more production is also in process. So this is about the news article and the basic introduction about AIDS and HIV. See, in this discussion I am going to compare HIV, COVID and monkeypox. Now let me tell why I am comparing all these three things. See after the advent of so many coaching institution including us there is so much of information available for you to study but what is missing is that there is no compilation okay see we will study hiv separately we will study covid and its related issues separately we will study about monkey pox separately but we will not compare everything and study only if we compare everything and study we will create long term memory okay So in this discussion I will be comparing all the three things that is HIV COVID-19 and monkeypox okay so look at this table first take the causative agent so AIDS is caused by human immunodeficiency virus which we saw just now and covid is caused by corona virus and monkeypox is caused by monkeypox virus so all these three diseases are caused by viruses now let us look at the genetic material in the virus HIV has a single stranded RNA okay and coronavirus has a single stranded rna as its genetic material in case of monkeypox virus it has double stranded dna okay this is the important point you must note hiv has single stranded rna coronavirus has single stranded rna and monkeypox virus has double stranded dna i have displayed the images of these three viruses here you can just look at the structure and have a basic understanding now moving on to transmission In case of AIDS the transmission happens due to sexual route mostly anal or vaginal sex and it also transfers due to infected needles syringe and drug injection equipments in case of covid-19 it is transmitted due to close contact with people with infection in case of monkeypox since it is of zoonotic origin animal to human transmission can occur directly through blood or bodily fluids and human to human transmission can result from close contact okay so this is about the transmission hiv can transmit due to reproductive route or sharing of needles or syringe covid-19 can transmit due to close contact with people with infection 
and monkey pox can transmit through close contact in case of human to human transmission and through blood or bodily fluid in case of animal to human transmission now let us come to symptoms see almost these three diseases have similar symptoms you can just go through it the common symptoms are fever cough rash chills headache everything but there are specific symptoms for covid-19 see in case of covid-19 loss of taste or smell difficulty in breathing this is just specific to covid-19 the other two things that is hiv and uh, monkey pox does not have these symptoms so just go through the symptoms to get a better understanding now let us see how the diseases are detected see in case of hiv the first thing you have to do is do the elsa test elsa here stands for enzyme linked immunosorbent assay once a person test positive in case of elsa test the next thing that they do is do the western bolt test to confirm the diagnosis so elsa test is positive and after that western bolt test is also positive only then confirmation of virus is made now let us go to covid-19 here the most common test used is the rt pcr test that is reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction test okay in this test the genetic material of the virus is detected in blood the next is the antigen test and the antibody test first you must know the difference between antigen and antibody here here antigen is the foreign material that invades our body and antibody is the substance produced by our body to counter the foreign bodies okay so antigen is the foreign body and antibody is the reaction of our immune system to the foreign body okay so in the antigen test the genetic material of the virus is detected and in case of antibody test rather than detecting the foreign particles the antibody produced by our immune system in response to the foreign body is detected and this is regarding to covid-19 in case of monkey pox there is no commercially available test but we can easily detect monkey pox right if somebody has huge pox or a pimple like structure in their skin monkey pox is confirmed okay now moving on to the vaccine see hiv has no official vaccine yet this is because the virus that causes aids that is the hiv virus keeps on mutating okay so there is no official vaccine for hiv yet in case of covid-19 there are so much vaccine the examples include pfizer vaccine covid shield covaxin moderna vaccine sputnik all these are vaccine for covid-19 in case of monkey pox see earlier we used to vaccinate for smallpox if you see our parents hand you can find a big scar because our parents took smallpox vaccine okay but since smallpox was completely eradicated our generation we stopped taking smallpox vaccine okay so now research say that the smallpox vaccine acts as a counter to monkey pox there is no separate vaccine for monkey pox why monkey pox started resurfacing now is that we stopped taking smallpox vaccine so this is why monkey pox is regenerating okay so basically there is no specific vaccine for monkey pox but smallpox vaccine which we used to take earlier acted as a counter for monkey pox so this is a comparison between hiv or aids and covid-19 and monkey pox this discussion we saw about the causative agent the genetic material in the causative agent then we saw the mode of transmission we saw the symptoms we saw the test available and the vaccine available against these three diseases see why i gave this compilation is that to create long term memory you have to make compilation like this see every month we will be discussing so many things we will be discussing different types of uh, festival different types of tribals but if we see everything separately means we cannot connect these things you must uh, create a table like this and write down about all the tribals discussed in the particular month only by creating notes like this you can retain the information for long time okay so this is how you must create a table and make notes to create long term memory so with this we have come to the end of the discussion now we can conclude the news analysis section and take up the practice prelims question we have three practice prelims questions i will solve two questions and one question is a quiz question for you let us take up the first question two statements about hiv is given we have to find the correct statement let us take up the first statement the symptoms of hiv and aids are not the same see this statement is correct because hiv for one is a virus which is a small infectious agent that multiplies itself by taking control of the cell inside a host aids on the other hand is a syndrome 
a group of connected symptoms that are usually caused by a single disease or a virus so symptoms of hiv and aids are not the same let us take up the second statement the hiv replication cycle is not only quick that is less than 24 hours but also prone to mistakes see this statement is also correct because in addition to being quick the hiv replication cycle is also prone to mistakes they are capable of producing altered copies of itself that combine to form new strains as the virus is spread from person to person this is the exact reason why vaccine is not developed for hiv so here both the statements are correct so the correct answer here is option c both 1 and 2 let us take up the second question see two statements about light mantle albatross are given we have to find the correct statement light mantled albatross is the only albatross species found in india see this statement is incorrect because as we saw in the discussion albatross is generally limited to the narrow band in the northern and southern hemisphere and this is the first time the light mantled albatross is recorded in entire of asia so statement one is wrong let us take up the second statement light mantled albatross is listed as a near threatened species in the iucn red list This statement is correct. It is listed as a near threatened species in IUCN list. So the correct answer here is option B, two only. Look at this question. See, this is a previous year question which appeared in the 2022 prelims. It is a pair based question. In the first column, wetlands or lakes are given, and in the second column, their locations are given. You have to find how many pairs are correctly matched. So aspirants, just go through the question and post your answers in the comment section. With this, we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like today's discussion like comment and share it with your friends for more updates regarding upsc preparation subscribe to shankar as academy youtube channel thank you for listening